Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, this morning I looked at our web honey pod logs and the one uh, URL that I sort of spotted there looked kind of new and different. Wireless underscore MFT was uh, the name of the exploited script there. So looked into it, appears to be a relatively recent found vulnerability in Abus cameras. You may be familiar with the parent name Abus from their locks, their uh, reasonable, respected sort of padlock company. And well, I didn't even know that they made security cameras. Apparently, they actually don't really make them. Digging into the vulnerability showed that this vulnerability is actually about, well, not quite, but uh, let's say 10 years old. 2015 is when core security first uh, released uh, vulnerability in air life cameras same url same command injection of vulnerability and that vulnerability kept coming back uh, later in a couple of other cameras what this really shows us is that these cameras are made of course by fairly generic companies they're then resold under different brands and these resellers really either don't bother or or really don't have the expertise in order to figure out that they are vulnerable to all of these uh, different issues that have been discovered years and years ago because they all share fundamentally the same software. Another thing to take from this is if you are owning any kind of IoT device and uh, these cameras are really just sort of one of uh, the popular examples of these IoT devices and you do see a vulnerability being published in a device that's somewhat functionally similar to what you own, you may very well check if you are vulnerable as well. Well, your vendor may never tell you because they never do these kind of checks. As Abus says it very well in the webpage describing and advertising its cameras, keep an eye on everything and that should definitely include Abus and other vendors of IoT devices that you are using in your network. It looks like we have an interesting sort of side effect of now having .zip domains. Looks like VirusTotal is now confusing uh, domain names and file names if they end in .zip. Mohan on Twitter uh, published about this first. That's where I saw it uh, first. I just played a little bit with it myself and, you know, file names like 2.zip are then all of a sudden being categorized as a URL. Uh, interesting little side effect. Not sure how much it matters. Certainly a bit uh, confusing as you are investigating with VirusTotal. And of course, a little bit Interesting also because VirusTotal is part of Google after all. Let's take a look at patches and vulnerabilities. Synology released an update for the 6.2 version of its station manager firmware, or DSM as they call it. It patches a vulnerability that was originally disclosed in the Pwn to Own contest. It had already been patched in DSM 7.1 and 7.0 about half a year ago. And Jenkins released a security bulletin noting vulnerabilities and patches for about 20 different plugins. Many of them are stored cross-site scripting and CSERF vulnerabilities, but there's also a couple arbitrary file write vulnerabilities and such, so definitely something that you do want to address quickly. And yesterday I mentioned how PyPy temporarily has suspended the registration of new user accounts, new projects. As somewhat expected, they have lifted that suspension now and everything should be working as normal. And last year, news uh, came out that a number of Honda key fobs are not rotating codes, as most of these key fobs do. So you could open the car door with a simple replay attack. 
Now it turns out that Honda wasn't alone here, at least the Nissan Syphil uh, Classic 2021, if I pronounce this correctly, uh, key fob also has that same vulnerability, so all it needs is a simple replay, no rotating codes used. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.